before the end of the first quarter. Shows good accuracy, too. Right here to Reggie Wayne, 42 yards. That was the last play of the first quarter. Five plays later into the second quarter, here's the uh, other uh, Pro Bowl component of the backfield in Indianapolis. Joseph Adai touchdown, kept a 12-play, 92-yard drive. Quick feet, great block. Colts are on top. Manning was uh, bagged by Mario Williams for the first time in the young career of uh, the Pro Bowl snubby. That's what they brought him there for. But it was negated. Travis Johnson called for unnecessary roughness, late hit. <laughs> Ed Hockley, don't mess with those guns. Next play, Manning finds Reggie Wayne for 12 yards. Nice screen. Got Lyman down, downfield blocking like the college screen. Next play, Manning finds Ben Tex, 28 yards. Hey, Manning is getting so much better outside of the pocket. And then five plays later, Manning connects with Dallas Clark. Tenth touchdown of the season for Dallas Clark. Colts going up by 10. Next in Texans drive, the first play of Rosenfeld's off the play fake finds Bob Sanders, another Pro Bowler for Indianapolis. We, we don't talk enough about this Colts defense. They're ranked second in the league and they're a little bit under mentioned because of Peyton Manning and his guys. That led to this. Four plays later, Manning finds Clark again. Colts go up 24 to 7. You know, and, and the Colts looking like the Patriots in the fact that they have nothing left to play for except playing out the string and keeping everybody healthy. And yet everybody's in this thing. Dallas Clark's running end arounds in the second half from Peyton Manning giving him to him. And then uh, two plays later, here's another guy running the ball for him. Clifton Dawson, rookie in front of the He got it. Got the end zone. <laughs> Touchdown, Indianapolis. Tate Manning uh, sat out the fourth quarter of this game as the Colts are 13 and two. They're six straight win, 11 and one all time against the Houston Texans. And Indianapolis has a big season finale against Tennessee. It is big for Tennessee, and that's something we'll talk about later on this edition of NFL Game Day. And also ahead, the Philadelphia Eagles playing a, a game in. New Orleans that the Saints needed a win to stay very much alive in the NFC wild card chase. Highlights of what? With the monkey officially. Fresh off their shocking win in Dallas in week 15, here is Donovan McNabb in the Superdome where the Eagles season came to an end last year. Reggie Bush. Game time decision did not play with the Saints needing to win to stay in the thick of the wild card hunt, rather to remain on the periphery. And here comes McNabb rolling out, opening drive on third and one, 40 yard dash, and then oh. balls batted in the end zone. Who's going to get it? Who wants it more, Steve? I think number 80 wants it more. Kevin Curtis, 7 0. The <laughs> Eagles go up 7 0. Well, here comes McNabb, looks fast to me. Here comes. Drew Brees in that high-powered, efficient of late Saints offense. Debra Henderson, a 52-yard hook up there, and then three plays later, a man filling in quite capably for Reggie Bush, and that's Aaron Stecker. And it almost seems as though with Bush departure because of injury, this team is a little more balanced. And that's Aaron Stecker, three-yard touchdown. Second play of the Eagles' following possession. Saints' Will Smith recovers the fumble exchange at the Eagles' 33. And then four plays later, here's that man Stecker again. Saints go up 14-7. But the Eagles come right back. As you can see, we're still not even halfway through the first quarter. Now we are. But here's Corell Buckhalter with a dash up the middle. Look at the explosion, the strength, and his legs. A great run. I don't know about the dance. That won't make it a prime time. 20. 20-yard touchdown ties the game at 14. Next possession for the Eagles. Play action. Reggie Brown, 31-yard touchdown. 21-14. It's not even the second quarter yet. A lot of offense. Andy Reid's got these guys playing. Third quarter now. Saints ball. Philadelphia up 24-17. Here's Aaron Stecker again. He can run between the tackles. 13 carries, 49 yards in those two touchdowns we showed you. What you trying to say, Coach? He can run between the tackles. Next play on first and goal. <laughs> Breeze, it's David Patton. It seems like he gets in the end zone. The referees say no. Give it to him, it's a home game. Well, after a challenge, it was upheld as not a touchdown, and that was a big call because Mike Carney doesn't get in. And then Aaron Stecker doesn't get in. Hey. Now it's suddenly fourth and goal, and the Saints thought they had tied the game, but after the challenge was upheld that they didn't get in, it's fourth and goal, and this without question. Stecker didn't get in. What a big goal line stand by the Eagles. And we have a turnover on down, so instead of 
the Saints tying the game. The Eagles march down 98 yards and go up two scores. 101 receiver with a linebacker. That old San Francisco route, Coach. That little, little stutter. Option route. Little option stutter. Greg Lewis with a nine-yard score. It's 31-23. Eagles lead in the fourth quarter. McNabb to Kevin Curtis. Perfect. 26 yards to the Saints, 26. Six plays later, McNabb to Kevin Curtis. Against the blitz, he threw that on time before he took the hit. That was well done. 38-23, now the Saints are desperate with two and change to go on the game. Breeze hooks up with Debrie Henderson until the ball pops free, and Stuart Bradley dives, picks it up. A little premature celebration. Premature guy. But that yeah. happens in New Orleans a lot. 38-23 <laughs> is the final. The Eagles at 7-8 and eight now. An impressive victory in Dallas. And then an impressive victory in New Orleans. Sticking a, a dagger, potentially, in the Saints' playoff hopes in 2007. Meanwhile, you know why Detroit's lost six games in a row? Why? Because they didn't have this guy suited up. Oh, look at that guy. Is he good? Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders. Because we said they were going to fall right here on this show. Well, that's not we. That's you. That's you. But here's... DJ Duckett. Looking like Barry Sanders? No. Big, big no, no. version. Second quarter, lines up 12-0. Brody Coyle to Tony Gonzalez. Wrong guy. Back by Paris Lennon. Get him, Brody. They'll always have Paris. Brody, get out of the way. Get no. out of the way. Oh, boy. He throws himself uh, in the way. Get out of the he, way, young he, fella. Live to play another day. Well, here's how he's going to get out of the way. He's going to take the cart. Yeah. Got hurt, would not return. Damon Heward would go the rest of the way, and he would do quite a job getting this Chiefs team back in it. Heward throws end zone. Dwayne Bowe, nice pick by the rookie. What a catch by the rookie. He's got it. But the uh, two-point conversion fails, and that would be... Uh, difficult for the Chiefs because they are now needing to score to stay in the game. And Dwayne Bowe cannot come up with it. Herman Edwards uh, watching uh, Damon Heward throw for 305 yards in relief, but watched his team go down to defeat for an eighth straight time. There are 11 losses, the most for the team since 1988, and Detroit wins for the first time since November 4th. They're now 2-6 and six since Deion Sanders said they were tricked rather than treaters. We don't lie on, on this show. show. Still to come on this program. Uh, all the uh, wild card situations to wrap up in the AFC. We told you that Jacksonville wrapped up the five. What about the sixth seed? It's between Cleveland and Tennessee now. Back to NASN Trivia Timeout. Now, the answer. Joe Montana was named the Super Bowl MVP in three of his four Super Bowl victories. He earned the MVP in Super Bowl 16, 19, and 24. Previously on NFL Network, Week 16 began in St. Louis where the Steelers steeled themselves after the loss of Willie Parker, the league's leading rusher for the rest of the season, breaking his right fibula on his first carry of the night. But Ben Roethlisberger carried the day. Three touchdowns on the night, a perfect passer rating against the St. Louis Rams, who down 10 had one last ditch effort to try and make a game of it. But Mark Bolger was picked off by Ike Taylor, who went the distance 51 yards for the pick six to seal the deal and put a 40-burger on the 3-12 and bickering St. Louis Rams. Mike Tomlin's team emerging victorious. Torrey Holt and Scott Linehan not. So the Steelers had to sit back and watch whether the Cleveland Browns would beat the Bengals or not. If they lost to Cincinnati and Marvin Lewis, the Browns would, that would mean the Steelers would win the AFC North. In this game, Cincinnati up six to nothing shortly before halftime. When Derek Anderson is picked off by by Chinodum and Duque. Last time these two teams met, it was a shootout. You'd think the same would happen this time. Well, uh, Duque barely uh, makes it to the end zone. Doesn't. Bengals first play after that pick. It's Palmer to his Pro Bowl wide receiver, TJ <laughs> Mazzotta. Five-yard touchdown. Bengals go up 13 to nothing on the Cleveland Browns, who have less than a minute to put some points on the board. This time, Leon Hall picks off Derek Anderson. And that allows the Bengals to stroll into the end zone one more time before halftime. And it's Kenny Watson doing the strolling. 19-0 Cincinnati after the two-point conversion failed. But nonetheless, the Bengals putting it on the Cleveland Browns in a game everybody thought the Browns could easily win. 
Uh, Derek Anderson picked off again in the middle of the third quarter by Ndukwe. Derek Anderson, a different guy this game, not taking what they give and trying to force the ball in. But Anderson finally finds the end zone shortly before the end of the third quarter to Braylon Edwards, his 14th touchdown this season. That is a franchise record. That's why he's going to Hawaii. Receiving touchdowns, 14 of them for Braylon Edwards, 19-7. Bengals lead fourth quarter less than eight minutes to go here comes Derek Anderson on the plus side of the field but Jonathan Joseph picks him off fourth interception of the day and the Browns come away with no points when they need them desperately very next play however Carson Palmer looks for TJ Hushmanzada and finds Lee Botton for the second time on the day a lot of interceptions four by Anderson and two by Carson Palmer in this day so Botton sets the Browns up in the red zone and three plays later it's Anderson hitting Braylon Edwards again and it's a five point game. Yeah they got the timing on that slant route perfect. So now the Bengals all they have to do is run out the clock and they really give a bad loss to the Cleveland Browns but Kenny Watson puts the ball on the turf with less than two minutes to go. They're in a four minute drill all they have to do is hang on to the ball and make some first downs. 12 seconds to go what can Anderson do with this second chance. Joe Jarevich is short of the first down. Cleveland takes a timeout to stop the clock. Fourth and one. Six seconds to go. Anderson Run. running for the first down. He gets out of bounds. He got it just in time. One second left in Cincinnati. That, that guy's got to speed that clock up a little bit up there. That's a long second. So with one tick left, Anderson's last chance for the Browns to win it. And it is incomplete. And the Cincinnati Bengals really stick it to their in-state rivals. The Browns, all they needed to do was win and they'd be in the playoffs and they are now nine and six and no longer in control of their own destiny. The Tennessee Titans knew that the Browns had lost because if the Browns won, the Titans would have been eliminated from playoff contention. So their game against Chad Pennington and the Jets would have just been playing out the string. Now it is for something considerable. It's for a chance to make the playoffs and Ronaldo Hill picks off. Chad Pennington late in the first quarter for the Tennessee Titans and then just three plays later it is young to Justin Gage for 29 yards. Great Will Ralph great throw by Vince Young. Second quarter same drive first and goal it's Chris Brown punching it in and Tennessee takes a 7-0 lead on the J.E.T.S. Chad Pennington starting for this game and uh, he found Jericho Cotri early and often on the day. Cotri 48 yard gain and then two plays later it's Cotri in the end zone 152 yards for Cotri and that score sixth career 100 yard gain 7 6 until the extra point attempt as usual it's normal but oh boy well, it's a lot of special teams mistakes today on punt teams on field goal teams on returns it was sloppy all day seven six Titans still have the lead next possession it's David Barrett picking off Vince Young so now the Jets get the ball back 36 yard attempt for Mike Nugent is good so the Jets take a 9 7 lead except there's a flag on the plane it is on Tony Brown on sportsmanlike conduct on the Tennessee Titans Tony Brown for leverage you're not allowed to leap on a player to yeah, that's a penalty now the decision is do you take points off the board or you take the ball and try to get six they took points off the board and tried to get six and then got no points when Keith Bullock picks off Chad Pennington three plays later so instead of the Jets leading 9-7 they're still trailing 7-6 midway through the third quarter when Ben Hart sock wide open how's a guy get that wide open play action pass coach 26 yard pickup that led to a Titans field goal up 10 6 that's your score in the fourth quarter now fourth and four for the Jets last chance for Chad Pennington and he's exactly. swarmed on her by who else Tony Brown so he comes up with the game ceiling sack and also the uh, that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that really helped out the Tennessee Titans in the long run so the Titans now have the advantage of going into week 17 with controlling their own destiny all they need to do is win in Indianapolis and their win and then helped the scoreboard watch on Sunday. I think it gave us a big lift in, I mean, the locker room. Uh, but in the same time, I mean, we had to go out there and take care of our business, even though, you know, uh, Cincinnati took care of their business of, you know, winning that ball game. So, I mean, that's all you heard from all our leaders, you know, coaches. You know, we got to go out here and take care of our business, and pretty much that's what we did. 
So isn't it interesting that in both conferences, the sixth seed had an opportunity to win a game in week 16 and get in the playoffs. And now both those teams, Cleveland and Minnesota, will enter week 17 watching somebody else have the benefit of that scenario. Cleveland, like Minnesota, needs to get some help in order to get in the playoffs. Even if Cleveland beats the San Francisco 49ers earlier in the day, next Sunday, they must sit around and watch the Sunday night game on NBC to see if the Tennessee Titans beat the uh, Indianapolis Colts, because if the Colts beat the Titans, then Cleveland will make the playoffs. But if the Titans win, <laughs> they are out. I mean, in Cleveland. So who wins this? Who gets into the playoffs uh, in the AFC? I think Tennessee gets into the playoffs. The reason why they're playing Indy. Peyton Manning's probably going to play a quarter or die a quarter. Reggie Wayne probably a quarter. Then they're going to pull their starters out. So Vince Young should be able to propel this team to victory. In Cleveland, they're playing San Francisco, although they're 5-10, and 10, Coach. San Francisco, they've been showing up to play some mm -hmm. real football. They're trying to finish strong. I like Sean Hill. He's been playing very well, and Frank Gore, too. But I do think that Cleveland will beat the 49ers in Cleveland. But it's going to depend if the, the Colts play their guys or not. It's that simple. They're at home. If they want to beat the Tennessee Titans, They'll go ahead and play the Peyton Manning for three quarters or whatever. But if they start pulling guys out, Tennessee can win this game and end up in the playoffs. How long of a day is it going to be for Cleveland next Sunday? I mean, after, oh, they, after their game. Day. they got to wait all day for that. And you don't want to be in that situation where you're sitting back and waiting. That's why every game is important. Now, every game counts. No doubt about that. Meanwhile, over in the NFC, the Seattle Seahawks and the Buccaneers already, already wrapped up their respective divisions. What about their seating in the playoffs? It would be wrapped up by day's end. We'll give you that information next. College basketball continues over the holidays on NASN with a live doubleheader. First up, Wisconsin and Texas lock horns in a Big Ten, Big 12 matchup. Then San Diego travel to Kentucky to face the Wildcats. A live college basketball doubleheader this Saturday only on NASN. In this jersey, I pledge to wreak havoc on my opponent's plus minus. To make one-timers happen way more than once. I pledge that my team will scrap for every single point on the schedule. In this jersey, I pledge the holes are only holes if they're open. Shop.NHL.com presents the RBK Edge jersey. All 30 teams reinvented for more strength, more speed, more belief. In this jersey, I pledge to play for the logo on the front, not the name on the back. What do you pledge? Visit Shop.NHL.com for your jersey. It used to be easy to name college football's greatest play. But now there's a new contender to the crown. Barmore throws it over the middle, complete to Thompson. Thompson looking for a block. He laterals it to Curry, and Curry laterals it again, and it's caught again, and Tomlin now on the lateral, and now the lateral to Thompson, and he laterals it back to Maddox on the other side. Maddox looking for a block. He fakes the, fakes the lateral to Curry. Now he laterals it to Curry. Curry's at the 49-yard line. He's dancing around. He throws it back now to Maddox, who throws it across the field to Barmore. Barmore looking to run. He's looking for a block. He's got a convoy. He's going to throw it to Thompson. Thompson's at the 30-yard line. Thompson now laterals it back to Curry at the 35. They're running out of spaces. Curry fakes. He's going to lateral it go, to Tomlin. Go, Tomlin's got a chance to go. Tomlin's got a chance to go. He laterals it. Now he's going to go to Maddox. Maddox at the 30-yard line. And now it's a lateral. And Curry's still going. No way. Curry's no way. Curry hits it's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. See all the best college football action live on NASN. Welcome back to NFL Game Day. Fran Charles alongside Terrell Davis. We want to take you through some games that had playoff implications in terms of jockeying for position and the standings. Baltimore Ravens taking on Seattle. Troy Smith getting his first start. The Seahawks can clinch that number three spot in the NFC. This is Willis McGahee getting hit. I hate to see this from a running back. Very productive year. Goes down with an injury. Took a shot in the ribs. He's done for the season. Second quarter. Uh, Matt Hasselbeck in company. Hasselbeck looking for Nate Burleson for the 21-yard touchdown. The drive, 12 plays, 89 yards. Seahawks up 7-0. Later in the second, Ravens down to first and 10. 
Mike Anderson fumbles the ball. Leroy Hill recovers and he's headed the other way. Nice run. Shakes off a tackler. Touchdown. 20 yards. Seahawks up 14 to nothing. And more now later in the second on a Seattle first and 10. Hasselbeck dumps it off to Sean Alexander. Alexander gets in from 14 away. So the Seahawks now they've locked down that number three spot in the NFC with a 27 to 6 victory. And this is why Jeff Garcia are making his return to San Francisco where he made three Pro Bowls for the Niners. Second quarter Niners up seven to six Garcia with a pump fake and he finds Jeremy Stevens for a 24 yard touchdown strike. Bucks up 13 to seven. Bucks ball here though on a first and ten. This is Luke McCowan in the game. It's picked off by Nate Clements who had the big 80 million free agent contract had in the offseason. Earning, the, the, earning the money there huh. And playing the drums. <laughs> All right on the very next play here it's Sean Hill who looked Good against the Bengals and continues to play well to Frank Gore for a 23 yard touchdown. The Niners, they're up 21 to 13. McCown now trying to make something happen and he finds Jeremy Stevens for a 24 yard touchdown. Stevens, second of the game, 21 to 19. Bucks going for two. Oh, did Michael Clayton get down? Great catch, but did not keep his feet in bounds. So the Niners, so when it 21 to 19, they've won two games in a row. All right, Monday night, Christmas Eve, the Chargers playing host to the Denver Broncos. LaDainian Tomlinson and the Chargers trying to secure their number three seed in the AFC playoffs. They need a little bit of help as well. A Joe Cutler from Santa Claus, Indiana. <laughs> Can't find anybody open here, so he's going to run up the middle, but Luis Castillo drags him down. Sean Merriman recovers the fumble. San Diego added a 40-yard field goal to go up 3-0. Later in the corner, it's Tomlinson. Breaking to the outside, 17 yards. He now leads the NFL in rushing with over 1,400 yards. Love the way he's been running the football of late going into the playoffs. Chargers up 10 to nothing. Third quarter, it's Rivers to Chris Chambers. Their midseason acquisition in a trade from Miami. 14 yards later, Chambers is in. Chargers up 23 to nothing. And on the Broncos' next possession, it's Cutler, but it's picked off by Clinton Hart after it goes right through the hands of Tony Scheffler. Fourth quarter now. Broncos going forward on a fourth and one. They have to. Cecil Sapp gets wrapped up for a one yard loss. Broncos turn the ball over on downs. There's a little jaw between Phillip Rivers and Jay Cutler in this one. Chargers win it 23 to 3. The AFC playoff picture. Chargers need to win to get that number three seed. And Tennessee, if the Titans beat the Colts, they're in. If they lose, they are not in. The Cleveland Browns will go. All right, plenty more to come on NFL game day. New England Patriots, they're 15 and 0, looking for the perfect season. Next Saturday against the Giants here on NFL Network, we'll go back to New England and Scott Hansen for a report. Live the NFL this season on NASN. Your Sunday kicks off with a live NFL countdown preparing you for three live action pack games. Then on Monday, start your week off with more football action and two first-run games followed by NFL Primetime, Monday Night Countdown, and ESPN's Monday Night Football Live. Catch daily news and analysis from the experts with NFL Total Access every weekday. And see the best weekly magazine shows, including NFL Game Day, Who Is, and Top Ten. And as the top teams fight for playoff places, NASN will bring you even more live crucial clinching games. With all this great NFL action, NASN is the only network for true football fans. Log on to NASN.com for scheduling and information. What do I control? I don't control the bumps and the bruises, the crowd, or who covers me. I don't control the bounces, the shootout order. But for that matter, what happens outside the rink? There are a lot of things in life I don't control. But then again, there are some things that I do. 
From the people who brought you College Game Day and the worldwide leader in sports comes the biggest thing to hit college football in years, College Football Live. A new way to get your fix every weekday with breaking news, exclusive interviews, and packed full of previews and predictions. Get ahead of the game every weekday with College Football Live on NASN. So in case you're just joining us, Tom Brady had three touchdowns. He needs two more to break Peyton Panning's single-season record there. Two of his touchdowns went to Randy Moss, who needs two more to break Jerry Rice's single-season touchdown record for receivers. Lawrence Morning, just in case everybody thinks the Patriots can't run the ball, went off on a 59-yard dash. Take that. Take that. And the New England Patriots go on to win 28-7 to go. 15 and 0 and they will go for a perfect 16 and 0 regular season the very first one in the history of the NFL right here on NFL Network on Saturday night against the Giants the franchise by the way that also stopped the 1934 Bears path to perfection just don't you know the 1972 Dolphins are the only team in the history of the NFL to go through the regular season undefeated and then do the same in the postseason Scott Hansen reports from New England even if the Patriots won't admit that they're playing for history, their play calling may be giving them away. Several times with a multiple touchdown lead, Tom Brady threw deep to Randy Moss with two or three defenders covering him, looking for a touchdown that would have tied Peyton Manning's and Jerry Rice's respective single season records. We just had to see the film and then maybe there were other guys, but uh, you know, sometimes you see him run there and it's just want to lay it up there for him. I think once, um, you know, I caught my first one, it was like, okay, this could be a long day. And then once the, you know, they started playing defense, we came out second half, they made their adjustments, and I just, you know, just wanted to get the win. The Patriots have now scored 71 touchdowns, breaking the mark of the 84 Dolphins. And of course, there is still the carrot of 16 and 0. Considering, you know, it's, it's NFL history of the NFL and, and uh, the incredible teams that have played in incredible offensive football teams, and, and to think that we've uh, been up there with the best of them is is exciting. You know, at some point there might be a time to reflect back on it, but right now that's the you know we'll do that some other time. Like I've said before, put me in, coach. I want to play. I want to win. And uh, for what it means this this week is being 16 and 0. So yeah, I want it. When asked if he would rest his starters against the Giants, Bill Belichick responded, "We will do what's best for the football team." He would not elaborate. With the division and home field advantage already clinched, Saturday night on NFL Network is about history, when regular season perfection and the team's mantra of one game at a time finally converge. At Gillette Stadium, Scott Hansen, NFL Network. All right, Scott, let's get down to brass tacks, gentlemen. Let's get down to brass tacks. There are 14 other teams in the NFL that can beat the New England Patriots, or at least have an opportunity to do so at some point in the playoffs. There's six teams still alive in the AFC, and then there's a eight teams in the NFC that they could possibly see in the Super Bowl if they get that far. Which team remaining alive is the greatest threat to the New England Patriots? Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Why? Because they have balance. Offensively, defensively, they could run the ball. Therefore, they could control time of possession. Defensively, they can stop the run, and they have the utensils up front, defensive linemen, to get a good pass rush on Tom Brady, and they can win in inclement weather. Keep in mind now, from now on, they're not playing any 1-14 in 14 teams. They're all good teams from now on. Even the Giants are a playoff team, and they've got to get by that one, and we think they will, but it's going to be a good game. And I, too, think that the Jacksonville Jags are the team. They've already proven that they can go up in bad weather and really? push around the Pittsburgh Steelers. Don't discount the Colts now. The Colts have won in uh, Foxborough the last two times. That's my point. You're, you're talking about the greatest threat is a team that's lost both their opportunities to beat the Indianapolis Colts this year. So. I don't like Indy mm -hmm. outside. Mm -hmm. I like Jacksonville outside matched up against the New England Patriots. And let me tell you something. We keep talking about who's going to play and who's not going to play. A lot of these guys have incentives. We discount that. A lot of these guys want to play because they one more sack, $50,000 yeah. bonus. I mean, the coach is going to decide that. Yeah, probably. one more interception. No, no, a lot of these guys, you're not pulling them out of the game. A lot of these guys <laughs> have incentives. You one sack away from $50,000, $60,000, $100,000, you're going to stay in that game. How about the Colts coming back with Marvin Harrison after they've trained Anthony Gonzalez to do mm -hmm. a heck of a job? They're going to be a dangerous team. So it's going to be a fun January. Yeah. But, of course, there's some more games to play in uh, December. 
And that's one game that's on the Saturday night schedule right here on NFL Network. Patriots against the Giants. History at stake, and so apparently are many incentives. Many. Saturday, kickoff, 8 p.m., uh, 8.15 Eastern. Do we have any incentives for sitting out in the cold, Dion? Any yeah, we do. Some the oh, frostbite. <laughs> <laughs> that was the order of the day, actually, in Chicago. <laughs> Speaking of... Previously on NFL Network, Saturday night in Charlotte, Tony Romo finds Terrell Owens at the end of the first quarter for the 15th touchdown of T.O.'s season. That is a Dallas Cowboys single-season record, but Romo to Owens the next time wound up with Owens spraining his left ankle, the dreaded high ankle sprain. He would be out for the game, and who knows for how much longer. As for the rest of the game, Marion Barber and Tony Romo would uh, take the Cowboys the distance. Barber takes it in the end zone here. The Cowboys win 20 to 13 in Carolina, which means they would get home field advantage up to the Super Bowl in the NFC if That's the Chicago snow and weather would get the Green Bay Packers on Sunday. But, you know, Brett Favre, Frostbite's his middle name, right, Steve? He's used to that stuff. Well, Brett Oop. Favre can't handle the snap here. Not really. And then the next play, a start of an even tougher day for John Ryan. Back yeah, to punt. Catch the ball. That's the first part of punting, right? And the Packers give it up there. Bears leading 6 0 after the 3 0 after the uh, miscues. Oh. Now, another disaster on special teams. This punt is blocked. They hadn't had a punt block in 12 years in Green Bay. 929 punts. Four plays later, however, the Packers defense comes up big or the weather again gets somebody. Musa Muhammad can't hang on on fourth and goal. Packers ball, and then Ryan Grant busts one from 66 yards out. You yeah, that, that Chicago Bear defense you know, has been known for its toughness up the middle, but this year they've been surrendering big runs. So the Packers are leading in a game in which they haven't been able to move the ball at all. In fact, Brett Favre had only two completions for nine yards in the first half. Here's ooh, one ooh, that ball's moving. of his many incompletions. You saw the ball just flutter around, so that's the problem is that it brought John Ryan on the uh, front again. Uh, uh. Wow. That was almost a Landetta-esque whiff. Kind of windy. It's a nine-yard punt, so two plays later, here's Kyle Orton doing something with the quality field position. Gets Garrett Wolf on the screen. 33-yard gain. On a day like this, that's a, that's a good call. Those Short screen pass. passes. And then Short. three plays later, the Bears hand off to their Adrian Peterson. Touchdown. Bears up 13-7. Let's go to the third quarter. Opening possession of the second half. Favre picked by Alex Brown. The ball was fluttering everywhere on Favre, it seemed. Yeah, but it was fluttering right to the other team. And uh, nine <laughs> plays later, second and goal, play fake, Orton to Desmond Clark. That's a touchdown. Yeah, when you're running the ball well, play action pass is what you want to do. And they go for two midway through the third quarter. It's 21-7, and it's converted, and then another blocked punt. Have you ever seen this, Steve? No, when it rains, it pours, I guess. I hadn't had a punt blocked in 12 years, and we, we saw it happen over and over again. Yeah, left you shaking your head. 28 to 7 to score. And then in the fourth quarter, Favre picked by Brian Erlacher, and he is gone. There he goes. Hold it up, Erlacher. Hold it up. Erlacher, hold it up for Deion Sanders. That man's upset by that Pro Bowl voting, so I don't blame him. Well, he holds up uh, one hand. It's just the ball's not in there. It's number one. And Favre, as you can see, mm. tried to fire that his famed fastball in there, but the Bears thump their hated rivals from Wisconsin and really do them some damage because the Green Bay Packers will go into the NFC playoffs as the two seed as Chicago sweeps Green Bay for a second time in three seasons. So if Green Bay is going to make the Super Bowl, it appears Brett Favre will have to win in Dallas for the first time in his career. And as you can see, if you're the top seed in the NFC, it's a good thing. Since 1975, nearly 91% of the NFC teams to have home field went on to play in the NFC title game. The Atlanta Falcons. Why? In Arizona. Because we have editing equipment. Second quarter, Falcons trail 14-7. Chris Redmond. Holy Bobby Petrino, Batman. To Lauren Robinson. This team was motivated today for some reason. Pig suey. Fourth quarter, Falcons down 24-17, but here's Redmond, Algie Crumpler. 
Nice little stutter on the linebacker. He gives the Falcons credit, traveling all the way across the country. Keep fighting. Interim head coach Emmett Thomas, and then Arizona did tie the score, however, right at the final gun, and then in overtime, Arizona watched Warner hook up with Anquan Bolden. 13 catches, 162 yards, and two scores for Bolden. And then eight plays later, here's Neil Rackers for the game winner, and it is a moral victory. Long flight on, man. Who scored a season high 27 points, but still suffered in his sixth straight loss. Kurt Warner with his 40th career 300 yard game, and Arizona has a chance to finish the season at an even 500. Do not go anywhere, because when NFL game day returns, we go prime time. Slap me, coach. We got umpires, wrestling players to the turf, guys going to the turf, banging drums. Prime time's next. Gentlemen, I give you the always entertaining and effervescent Deion Sanders. Are you ready? Let me tell you something. You got my music kicked in. 21st of prime time, baby. Coach slapped me before the segment started so I could get my game on. Still the best corner in the league. Let's go. Number 10. Woo! I feel it tonight. Chicago's Bears special teams are not just the Devin Hester show. Yeah, they got a block in unit two. Two blunt, blunt, two block punts. I thought I was ready, but I got out the gate a little slow. One return for